Hello everyone! Ok, first delete the lamp and the cube and now we are going to start modeling. For that we'll need to add a plane, and then scale it and then duplicate it and make a roof. Then we can add a cube for reference for knowing the scale of everything. We will need to set the height of the cube to something between 2.5 and 3 meters. Then we can grab a roof and put it just on the top of our cube. Now we are going to duplicate the cube and put it up so we can see it easier and then we are going to make the layout of the back rooms. Be creative and remember back rooms are all liminal space, you don't have to make it real, you don't have to make a real room, just grab a cube and extrude the edges uh, with the E key and then uh, you will have something like this. Now we select one of the faces of the top of our structure and we press shift G and then we go to the co-planner. Then when we have all these pairs selected we are gonna press the E key and then we are going to inset all the faces at the same time so we can make the socket of the back rooms. Now we can extrude everything up, place everything down and make sure the scale is correct when you see it on the camera mode. Don't forget to make the socket visible. Then we move to a nice location inside our back rooms and Put our camera there with Ctrl Alt 0. Now we're going to the shading part. Yeah! First, we add the texture for the walls. I forgot here, but you will need to go to the edit mode and then select everything. Press U and Q projection. Now we can scale it from here. Now we'll proceed to make the floor visible again. And then we're going to import the textures of the floor. You can download the textures from the description of this video. I didn't make them, but they're free, so yeah. Now we are going to Put all the textures on the correct node and don't forget to make the normal map a normal map and that's important because uh, we don't want to have a normal image and we are going to with the node wrangler activated we are going to put the mapping node there and we're going to connect it to the vector of each texture and then we're going to place the mode of the normal map texture to non-color it's important and then we are going to set the scale of the mapping node to something that looks right to you now we're going to prepare the render for rendering with cycles. We're gonna enable Motion Blur and we also gonna change the max samples to something like uh, 128. Then we are going to set the resolution to 640 by 480. Then we'll have to enable the ceiling and create a new material for it. Then you will have to add the textures to the ceiling. These textures are available on the description of the video as well as of the textures of the wall and the floor and then you can uh, set connect the points where they should be. Don't forget to add the normal map node there and don't forget to change the color space to non-color on the normal map texture. Then we add the mapping node there connected to every single vector and then we can change the scale of the whole ceiling. And now here I'm adding the emission map for the uh, ceiling and all the lamps will be there. I also provided you the, this emission map so you can download it. You can make one yourself if you modify the texture of the ceiling. Um, as you can see here I'm hitting render and you can watch how you can see how it looks like right now. Um, as you can see it's pretty dark so I'm adding here a mix with the type of mix to color and setting connected to emission and then we'll set it to color we put a yellowish color like in the back rooms and we increase the emission strength. Now uh, we're going to the floor again and we are going to edit the material to make it darker. For that we're going to add a mix node with the type set to color, then we're going to set it to black and change the mode to darken. Now you can play with the factor to see what it works better for you. And we're also going to duplicate this one and set it to color. Here I selected a brownish color because I wanted to make it similar to the original. In the case of bumps in the carpet you can change the scale of the mapping node to make it look smaller and more realistic. Okay, now we go for animation. First thing we have to do is increase the length of our timeline. Then you'll have to go to the preferences, go to navigation and then copy my settings. Now we will have to press F3 and type walk nap, then press enter. Nothing will happen, you will have to activate the recording button and then space and then again F3 and enter. And you will be um, controlling the camera in first person mode. Now you have to move around uh, in these uh, back rooms, don't worry, um, you can edit it later but just keep it like if you were in the real back rooms act a little bit and then you can play back the animation to see if it's correct for you. Once you're sure that's the animation that you want, you can grab everything, select it and then move it to frame zero. Okay, now we go for the camera. We'll need to enable depth of field and decrease a little bit the distance 
then decrease the f-stop to something between 0.8 and 1.2. For the next part, we will need an add-on created by Ian Hoover. We'll just need to enable it and click to add shake item and increase the scale to 2. Okay, now is the moment to play the animation and check if everything looks right to you. If it doesn't, we can re-record the animation or um, play with the settings of the Shakeify add-on. And here you can see me uh, adding some more keyframes to make the animation slower because it was too fast. Now we hit render image and then we go to the compositing tab because we're going to composite. Now that we have a reference frame of our animation, we can add a viewer node to see what we are changing from our frame. Now we make a space and then we'll have to add a blur node and then a glare node. The blur node is pretty straightforward. And then we add a glare with fast glow and low quality. And now in the render settings, we go to color management and change it to raw. And also change the look to medium high contrast. Now when previewing the result, looking for animation errors. After checking the animation, I've noticed that the movements of the camera are too soft for being a handheld camera. So I increase the influence here to make it look more human. Now we go to the output properties and change the route of the output. Change the exporting format to FFmpeg video. Then in the encoding, we are going to set it to mpeg4 and the quality to perceptually useless. And then we press render.